नमस्कार मित्रों वी हैव अ लोड टू कवर इन दिस वीडियो सो डोंट स्किप एनी पार्ट एंड वॉच टिल दी एंड ऑल्सो इफ यू आर अ फेसबुक यूजर दैन प्लीज कंसिडर फॉलोइंग अस ऑन अवर फेसबुक पेज I have been planning to build an electric skateboard for a long time but my budget was very limited. The motors typically used in e-skateboards are quite expensive. One thing that all these process motors have in common is their large size and lower KV rating which results in high torque. While browsing Roboroutine I found a motor that catch my eye. It has a rotor diameter of 35 mm, a height of 48 mm and a KV rating of 790. Although the KV rating is still quite high, I plan to use two motors for my skateboard which should be sufficient. For the power source I decided to use the Pro Range lithium ion battery. Typically lithium ion batteries are not used in drones but Pro Range batteries are special. They are designed to meet the high demands of drone usage. Here are the key features of Pro Range batteries. Their battery comes in various capacities and cell counts and you can also order custom batteries tailored to your specific needs. All right so these are the parts I ordered from Robodotin. Here's a size comparison of this motor with other drone motors. I also received my custom battery pack within a few days. I chose this battery specification to meet the requirements of this project and my future projects. This 21,500 watt lithium ion battery can provide 190 ampere of constant current and 230 ampere of peak current, which is more than sufficient for this project. So all the parts for the electric skateboard are arranged except for the radio controller. Now it's time to make the radio controller. I usually use ESP32 to build radio controller for my projects, but many people have been asking me to build a radio controller using ESP8266. While the ESP8266 does support the ESP Now protocol, the problem is it only has one analog input pin, which means we can only make a one channel radio controller with it. However, I do have a solution to this problem, but that's for another video. For this project, one channel is sufficient. To make the radio controller more professional and compact i'm going to use glc pcb to build it i started by designing the circuit in easy da converted it into a pcb and downloaded the gubber file then i logged on to glcpcb.com to order the pcbs glc pcb is a popular manufacturer of printed circuit boards offering multi layer pcbs flex pcbs pcb assembly services and smt stencils besides pcbs they also provide 3d printing and cnc machining services they offer almost everything you need to prototype a product their user friendly interface makes the ordering process easy even for beginners to order pcbs upload a gubber file on glc pcbs website select your pcb settings and order high quality pcbs at a reasonable price After a few days I received my PCBs. I did not use the PCBA service for the receiver PCB so I could show you the assembly process. I have been using their services for over a year now and I have never been disappointed. If you want to take your project to the next level click the link in the description. Now before starting the assembly process let me show you this amazing tool the SI012 Pro Max soldering iron from Sequire. It comes in a nice packaging with a stand, a tip and the main module itself. The soldering iron comes with an OLED display and control buttons but the main thing is it can reach a maximum temperature of 450 degrees celsius in just a few seconds. Now the soldering iron is ready to use so let's start the assembly process. So PCB assembly is finished now it's coding time you can use any programmer to program your board but i'm using this cap of esp programmer by the way this is not sponsored it is just my own choice i already explained the coding process in a previous video the process will be the same just choose the code provided in the video description and select node mcu instead of esp32 Currently I am not using a bidirectional ESC as it is expensive and I would need two of them so the default code is written for a single direction ESC 
a bidirectional AC option is also available in the code, you can uncomment the line to use that functionality. With this joyful sound, our programming work has been complete. Now let's give it an enclosure. This is the enclosure that I created in Fusion 360. Now let's make it real using my all new Quality Ender 3 V3 Plus 3D printer. If you want to know more about this amazing 3D printer, check the description or click the i button to watch a detailed video. I also use my K1C to get the job done quickly. By the way, all the 3D printed part came out very well. Now we can start the assembly process. Alright guys, our radio transmitter and receiver are ready. The transmitter looks very nice and premium. Now let's see how it works. Besides the throttle, it also has two push buttons which allow for extra features like cruise control. As you can see, it is working as expected. With that part done, we can now proceed to build our electric skateboard. I started by taking the dimension of the skateboard trucks and designing them in Fusion 360. Then I began making the main mechanism to hold the motor in place and tightened the belts. I also designed the enclosure for the battery and electronic parts. Now the design is ready, so let's start the 3D printing process with my Quality Ender 3 V3 Plus 3D printer. All the black parts are printed with Hyper PLA carbon fiber filament to make them more durable and the blue parts are printed with normal PLA. Now finally, it's time to start the final assembly.
It is just a coincidence that the color of the battery and electronics enclosure matches the skateboard color. Now our electric skateboard is ready so let's give it a test. Now the moment of truth, as soon as I push the throttle slightly, the skateboard started moving very smoothly. I am very surprised with the performance of these motors. The 5S lithium ion battery also plays an important role here. I also checked the motor and ESC from time to time. The ESC temperature was the same as the ambient temperature and the motor temperature was slightly higher than the ambient temperature. The only downside I see for this skateboard is its single direction ESC and low ground clearance. Actually, I was not aware of these support rails when I was ordering the battery pack. But I think these are not big problems. We can easily upgrade these parts to solve these issues. If you like my efforts, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel for more such videos. That is it for today guys. I'll see you in the next one.